What I always loved about Advancing Black Pathways, just the name of it, is that it was very tactical and very intentional around black people and making sure that their pathway to financial success was clear and helping them make their way down that path. I'm most proud of the progress that we've made and the intentionality in 2019. It really highlighted that we could make an impact by engaging our community, engaging partners, and focusing on what really matters for African Americans. Advancing Black Pathways is focused on strengthening the economic foundation of the black community by investing in education. The role that education plays in creating wealth in the black community actually starts by leveling the playing field. It's gonna close the racial wealth gap in America by putting students on a pathway on careers that they would not have otherwise been exposed to. Our goal is really to change the way African Americans live to ensure that they are building wealth and assets. We want to see more African Americans not only moving into the middle class, but owning homes, creating jobs, creating opportunities for people within the community. And I think this opportunity with Advancing Black Pathways will lead into that in a very positive way. Everyone sees this as a seminal moment where we can actually move the needle to create more inclusive growth. I just feel really excited about the opportunity that's ahead of us. Hi, I'm Sekou Kalin, Head of Advancing Black Pathways for J.P. Morgan Chase. Hi, I'm Crystal Sizemore, Private Client Advisor for J.P. Morgan. Hi, I'm Tequila Swan, Private Client Advisor for J.P. Morgan. Well, thank you again for tuning in to ABP Career Readiness Series, where we share real advice and tips on how to build lasting and rewarding careers. Today, I'm joined by two of my colleagues. It's good to see you ladies uh, for a discussion on how to establish a career as a financial advisor. They're gonna provide insights also, and this is important, for exploring roles here at J.P. Morgan Chase. So with that, let's jump right in. So Crystal and Tequila, talk to us about your career path. You know, what made you wanna pursue a career in financial services? And, and talk to us about how you got to where you are today. Oh, wow, yes, I, I, I'll, I'll kick it off. Um, so I am from Mobile, Alabama. I went to school at Spring Hill College, which many people may not have heard of. It's a very small Jesuit school. Um, it's actually the Jesuit College of the South. And so while I was at Spring Hill, I studied finance and economics. Um, it was a combined kind of major because there weren't a lot of people in either one. So they just kind of put us all together. Um, and from there, I, you know, had several internships just in different financial service firms. And my final one was an independent firm my senior year. Um, it was actually an online brokerage firm. And at that company is where I started my full-time career. Um, this was in the midst of the uh, great financial crisis where, you know, we had double digit unemployment. And so when I had a job offer right out of school, I took it and I moved with that firm to Lafayette, Louisiana. I then moved with that firm to Dallas, Texas. Then I moved with that firm to Oklahoma City and then uh, here to Kennesaw, right side of Atlanta. And so after eight years with that firm, they were being acquired. And uh, one of my colleagues actually told me about JP Morgan, how great it is, how it kind of compares to the role that I had at that firm as an investment consultant. Um, and so I interviewed at JP Morgan, made the switch, and I have been here three years. All right. Well, congrats again. Good to hear about that story. Well, thank you. Uh, they ask you to unpack some of what it's like moving and all that great stuff. But yeah. we'll turn to you, uh, Tequila. You want to jump on in? Yeah. Um, so I attended Alberno College in uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, it's an all girls school. So not a lot of fun there, but um, uh, I studied finance there. Um, but I got into banking first um, as a teller because uh, it was considered 
uh, to be a professional role. Um, and I worked part-time and went to school. Uh, so started at a bank as a teller and worked my way up and through acquisitions, became bank one and made a move with my husband's career here to Arizona where I'm currently located. I was able to transfer with the firm and, and uh, we know the story bank one uh, was bought by JP Morgan Chase. And um, here I am now. So I always like to say I was homegrown here. Uh, this has been my world for about 23 years now and I love it. Um, but I made a transition to a banker role, did that for eight years here. And then the natural progression for me um, uh, with my colleagues was to become an advisor. And I've never looked back. I love it. Absolutely love it. Great. Uh, all we already see that you've moved around in terms of cities and locations, but it seems like you've been put in Arizona longer. Uh, yeah. So again, we'll pick up on these things as we go throughout this conversation. But what I want to pivot to is what exactly you do. They think about financial advisors. Some of these may be recent grads, but, but talk to us about the typical day and, and just help demystify what a financial advisor actually does. So I always tell clients, I help clients build, manage, and protect their assets. And many of them, I've, I've been with them since first married and now kids are graduating from college. So I help clients reach you know, their dreams of retirement and living the life that they want to live um, once they retire. So you know, many of those solutions and strategies are you know, here through JP Morgan and we, we put all of that together to, to help clients get to where they wanna be. So it's, a, it's fulfilling. Well, great. So Crystal, uh, can you talk to us then about the skills or background that's needed for someone to be a financial advisor? Like what do they need to be passionate about? Yes, absolutely. So you certainly need to be passionate about helping people, number one, particularly in our community, I think, because it's just an underserved, you know, part of our situation here. Um, I think you need to be passionate about um, personal development because things are just constantly changing in this world. You just can't get comfortable in what you know because it's, it's evolving. I think you need to be, um, you know, comfortable with working on a team, particularly in our firm because we are so connected to the branch. There's just a lot of people that you have to work with to, you know, um, make it a success for yourself and for the people around you. And I think you have to be a good listener because that's paramount in terms of your client relationships. Like Tequila said, you help people, you know, reach their dreams, accomplish their objectives, but you also have to be cognizant of like the conversation to get there, right? Um, there's a lot of trust building and that comes through listening and, and understanding. Great. Uh, Tequila, anything you want to add there? No, she hit the, the, the nail right on the head. It's, it's, it's being passionate about people, mm -hmm. uh, a big part, being passionate, uh, getting to know them personally, uh, their family, uh, what's going on in their lives. So being passionate about people is a big one, helping them. Great. All right. Well, what I want to do is to get into a specific program that J.P. Morgan launched and that is the advisor development program. So can you talk about you know, what the goal of the program is? Obviously it's our commitment to diversity, but if I'm someone who I've heard about the program, once you explain it, you know, what can I gain from participating uh, in the advisor development program? Well, I'll tell you, it is a wonderful program. In fact, we have um, one of my colleagues is involved in the program currently at my office. And we've come such a long way with this program because you're not out on an island by yourself. You have so many um, resources and people that are there to help you um, to be successful in this role. So um, I, the, the, um, my colleague, he has just a load of resources that are available to help him be successful. So that hasn't always been available. So what a great, great program this is. I guess uh, that ties back into, Crystal, what you were saying is that having that team of support and resources around you seems like a critical component of, of being a financial advisor. I would agree. 
Um, and I think that part of the event, the advisor development program um, is diversity and like, experience, right? Diversity and background. Because particularly I um when I learned about the program, I thought it was outstanding, right? And I actually uh referred someone to it who had a biology degree, right? He had a biology degree. He had a mentor who, you know, which um, you know, joined this investment class with him. And so the, his mentor knew a family member of mine. So we kind of connected and I, he was just trying to figure out how he can get into it, right? Because his background wasn't in finance, wasn't in economics, wasn't in investments, anywhere near banking. And so I had recently heard about this program and I said, I think this is right up your alley. So I referred him to it. He interviewed, he got in, he's now in the role doing amazing. He's like transition to his licenses. So I think it's about not only diversity amongst, you know, ethnicity, background, gender, but it's also experience and background as well. Yeah, thank you for sharing that example because one of the questions I, I had was, you know, what is the major? Because often people assume that you have to be a finance or economics major, but what you just described is that you could be from any background or any major because a lot of the skills you're going to go through and become licensed and pick up on the job. So let's get into uh, licenses uh, in, in a moment. But what I want to know is from a career trajectory, like what is the track uh, for financial advisors? Uh, go ahead with you, Tequila. So for me, I have been in the role for, for some years, 20 some odd years, but it's, it's kind of a personal decision. Some of my colleagues have gone on um, to become market directors, um, regionals, uh, uh, managers, uh, but a lot of us have chosen to stay in the role uh, to help clients and um, help them grow their assets. But it's more of a, a personal decision on if you want to stay in close proximity connected with clients or if you want to go into management. So a lot of different routes they could take um, in advancing their career, a lot of choices here at JP Morgan. So it really depends on if you wanna to head towards management or if you wanna stay connected with the client, I've chosen to um, stay you know, hand in hand with my clients. So that, that's you know, great to hear that again, it's the, the individual choice and I'm sure by being with clients uh, for, for a good amount of time, you've experienced different miles, milestones and you're able to see uh, you know, the fruits of your advice uh, at work as their assets <laughs> grow, et cetera. So I'm sure that has to be incredibly rewarding. Uh, so as you think about your career and, and your, your track, are you uh, thinking about a similar approach or what are other avenues that you've seen for since you've moved uh, with the prior company even to different offices and now to here three years ago, you know, what do you foresee as like a, a, a career track for you? So when I first got into the industry, I was a stockbroker at that independent firm. And it was very service oriented. It was very reactive. It was in the age of like when people were just like getting into investing for themselves, using the Internet to invest and buy stocks. It was, it was very service oriented. And so as I moved within that company, I became an investment consultant where there was just a lot more education, like helping people do research on a security, helping people put their own portfolios together, helping people just figure out what all this means and how it can work you know, for themselves and for their family. And so um, eventually I, got my manager or my advisory license with that firm where we started referring to managed money. And that was right around the time that I made the transition. And so my first time actually giving advice was here at JP Morgan. And so it has been so rewarding because there were a lot of time in my previous roles when people just wanted me to do it for them, right? Can you just tell me what to do? I have all this money, I don't know what to do with it, can you help me? And in that role, I really couldn't. And so at JP Morgan, I feel really empowered to make just a bigger impact, build deeper relationships with clients and just you know, be you know, a part of their financial story. 
That being said, because I'm just three years in, I think I need to like really, I'm digging into this role, like, and I really want to plant my feet in this community because my family has moved a lot and we do not plan on moving anymore. And so we're putting roots down and I just really want to be able to help and serve the community where I live and work too. So you mentioned, uh, you know, providing advice uh, for clients. And in, in order to provide advice, you have to have different uh, licenses uh, or securities licenses. So talk to us about, like, what is that process? Like, why do we need licenses? So uh, we'll just start with you, Crystal, and, and Tequila, if you could jump in as well. Perfect. Yes. So this industry is very regulated. And so there are licenses required to provide the type of services that we provide. So it'll start with the Series 7 and the Series 6 FINRA licenses that really go into securities, like what's a stock, what's a mutual fund. You learn all about the markets, different indexes and exchanges. And then from there, you'll get the FINRA Series 65, which is really about how to provide advice. And I think that is very important in this environment. And the great thing is that the firm gives you time to accomplish um, study for those exams and and get past them. So uh, go ahead. Uh, to well, I, the, the great thing about the program is they're with you every step of the way. So mm -hmm. through your uh, Series 7, you have time to study, to learn the markets, learn exactly what you're going to be interacting with clients. Um, about gives you the expertise that you're looking for. Um, and then they give you time to study. Um, you have um, colleagues that you can go to for explanations. Um, they really walk you through it step by step. They're right there with you um, to make sure that you're successful um, with these testings for the licenses. So it's just, <laughs> it, it's just wonderful um, how they come alongside and help. And that's important as you think about, again, someone coming into uh, this program that may not have the background to know up front that this is about supporting, ensuring that you grasp the knowledge you know, or able to uh, you know, successfully secure your license and then also obviously provide uh, the best advice for our clients. So, but let's take a pivot back to JP Morgan and I'll start with you, uh, Tequila. You've been here, uh, you said two years, <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I underestimate 20 years. I forgot. They had the kindergarten to work program and you were a part of that. That's what it was. <laughs> now I remember. But so you've been here like 20 years. What, what have you enjoyed most about JP Morgan? What has kept you here uh, at the firm? Oh, wow. Um, I have a great team. So just starting with that, they really cultivate a team environment here at JP Morgan. And I've talked to a lot of people from different firms and they say there's no platform, there's not a program that can out perform or that can even match what JP Morgan is doing here. They've done the smartest thing. They have put a, a whole team together in a banking center. Um, and we are working towards the same goal, which is helping our clients to be successful. Um, I'm just passionate in my role. I really am, but I enjoy all of my colleagues, our teamwork. Um, and then I enjoy the, the pride that comes behind working with JP Morgan, carries a lot of weight. Um, I know I've got solutions, so it makes it really easy for me to help clients. I know that what they're looking for, um, we offer it and it's not mediocre, but it's gonna be top of the line. It's gonna be the best forward thinking. Um, so it, it's actually been easy for me um, because of the firm and the environment that they're promoting here. So I, I, I have no reason to go anywhere else because we're working for the best, the best firm. We really are. And Chris, I want you to answer it in a different way since you've been here three years and yes. moved uh, you know, from another firm. And some of these, uh, our viewers at least, could be young professionals who yes. may be wanting to move to JP Morgan after this. Talk to us about that process and when you felt like, okay, yes, you know, this has been the right decision for me in my career. I'll tell you. So at my previous firm, I was typically either always the only something, the only woman, maybe the only black person. 
And when I came to JP Morgan, I really felt seen. I really felt welcomed. I felt like I felt valued in my own experience, in my own point of view. Um, T. Duckett has braids, right? And so just to see a CEO with hair like mine meant the world to me. Um, when I just I took out my braids for this interview myself. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and I, I went to my interview with a braid out and I felt comfortable doing that because, you know, it doesn't, I guess the firm looks at you as an individual, right? Not what your hair looks like or what your what color your skin is. And I think that being in Atlanta um, makes a really big difference too. Um, my market director is someone I feel really comfortable with, someone I trust very well. And to Tequila's point, there is a team of people around me. We're all working towards the same goal. And I think that makes a big difference. I think that you know, having your voice be valued, having, you know, your experience be valued on a team, um, you know, it, it keeps people around. I'll, I'll just. No, it's a great response. And we talked about that in one of our other sessions. And that is the importance of being able to be your authentic self uh, mm -hmm. and to, to recognize things that shouldn't matter. You know, yeah. my hairstyle, that, that that's not going to be what impacts my ability to grow in a company and serve my clients. So I want to stay with right. this theme and Tequila, I'll go to you. Uh, how have you personally been impacted as an African-American woman in banking uh, in these times where the, these calls for racial and social justice, you know, how have you managed you know, to be your authentic self at work uh, and continue to serve your clients, you know, family? Like how has that all come together for you? Well, I, I have to, to be honest, I, the firm has been a great uh, source of support um, during these times. Um, my clients have been amazing. Uh, when we, we did our early close for Juneteenth Day, I got all of these emails saying, I came to the banking center, but it was closed. They're like, great. I, we're, you know, we're so happy for you and so happy that the firm has, to, so I got lots of emails and it just, it just warmed my heart. It really did. And clients are, um, they are in it with us. They have come to be parts of our family and, and, and see things that are going on in the world. I've received so much encouragement. Um, just my clients have been wonderful. They've sent me emails and phone calls. Uh, you know, how are you doing? How's your family? So, you know, I'm grateful and thankful, and I'm glad that the firm has come alongside, which they've been doing things for years. Uh, JP Morgan really has been, so this isn't something new to our firm. Um, it's been really good. It really has been. My clients, my clients are everything to me. They really are. Um, they've been very good to me. Uh, I've been good to them too with solutions and things that we're doing. Um, but it's been, it's been really encouraging. People have really come out and, and just really shown their support. And it sounds like, again, one of the advantages of, of maintaining these longstanding relationships with clients is you, it's almost like an extended, let's call it a uh, client family. I don't know if that's a new phrase that we'll use, but I no, let's get to here. So, so I, Crystal, what about you? What, what has uh, any uh, reflections that you've had in this moment? Obviously, you've have been now in Atlanta for a couple of years, but you, you have your roots there. You know, how have you been able to navigate it through uh, these uh, challenging times? Yes, I. it has been a challenge. I have four small children. And all of my clients know that because everyone gets floored when I say that number, right? And so- I, I have three and I was thinking, wow, four, okay, all right. <laughs> well, we had twins the third time. So there, there you it have. was all not right. in the plan. <laughs> um, but I think that the my market director, you know, just the leadership team has been really supportive of us as individuals, of us as parents, of us as people all experiencing this together. And so there's been a lot of balance. There's been a lot of conversations that we have had um, as a firm so that 
you know, our voices are heard so that our concerns are heard and not only heard, but addressed. And so I think that's been um, the biggest help, right? Like I haven't been having to stress out about, will I have a job next month or will I be able to do X, Y, Z for my kids because um, it just had, it's not a risk or it hasn't been a risk with the firm uh, wanting to do the right thing for everyone. Well, that's, that's great to hear because for uh, parents in, in this era, uh, especially Zoom calls and your child yeah. running across the camera, uh, you know, unfortunately this has not happened in any of the interviews, uh, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, it is- I locked my door, so don't expect to see You locked the door, that's smart. You gotta <laughs> learn the necessary measures you can take. <laughs> Uh, and so, but it's great though to know that even in these difficult times that you're in an environment where you feel comfortable that you could continue this new normal of balancing uh, a lot at home and, and going into the branch, et cetera. Now, Tequila, I, I've been curious because I know you've been helping other folks uh, make some money, but what about, is this a great profession to make money? I know I probably shouldn't ask you that, but, but uh, every time I see you, you're looking mighty prosperous. So <laughs> the people want to know. What is that financial benefit? Is there a good financial benefit of being a financial advisor? It is, it is. You really can change the trajectory of your life and the life of your family and your friends by you know, knowing markets and, and uh, being able to help them navigate and navigate your own personal finances. And I always say with the firm, the sky's the limit. It really is. You bring in the clientele, you help them. JP Morgan is willing uh, to, you know, uh, compensate you for it. So it, it's been a great life for me. It really has been. And yes, I'm prospering. <laughs> You're prospering. So, so, so again, let, let's, yeah, for, for those that just heard that, they're like, tell me about that ADP again. So we're going to go through all these acronyms. But actually, let's talk about the advisor development program. So let's say I've come into the program, but now I'm here as an employee. You know, what are some of the broader support systems or programs uh, that really help uh, diverse uh, professionals or others once they're here to have that sense of community? What are some of the programs you've been engaged in? That's a great question. And I think it's something that was missing from the previous firm where I was. And um, for come me, here early. I don't know. We I, were yeah. no, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> So I actually met Tequila on the Black Leadership Forum. Um, in any other you know, scenario, we probably would never have crossed paths, me being in Atlanta, her being in Arizona. But because we're both part of the Black Leadership Forum, it really created a community. It expanded both of our territories right across this country. Outside of that, um, the firm does have BRGs, which are business resource groups, where you can connect with people who are like you. So, there's bold for you know black leadership development. There's women on the move for women to connect with other women in the firm. There's just a wealth of uh, groups and resources available to you once you do join. Um, and so I think that's invaluable too. And what I like about these uh, business resource groups that you don't have to be you know the fill in the blank to be, participate. It's actually right. encouraged that you join multiple resource groups so that you can be proximate to other thinking and to a diversity of both ideas and people. But business resource groups will encourage you to get involved as soon as you join because it's your opportunity to connect with your fellow employees. So uh, Tequila, anything you would like to add? Yeah, I'm part of Bold and I'm also part of Aspire. So Aspire is our Asian community. And we do all kinds of great things together. Me and my colleagues go to meetings. So I, I like to get involved with, with the different groups to, to learn. And, and I think that learning becomes key, you know, for Aspire, you'll learn Diwali Festival and, and yeah. all, all the different groups. It just gives you yeah. organic ways to really just connect uh, with other cultures, which I presume even is helpful as you speak to uh, your clients, that you're able, yeah. able to recognize uh, yeah. a particular holiday or, or uh, some cultural nuance. So, you yeah. know, that's, again, great, great insights. Uh, so I want to switch, though, in general, uh, to talk more about uh, diversity. Because as I think about the industry, you know, historically, there has not been, you know, as many African-American financial advisors. And so I think this push 
to hire is important, but tell me why it's important for you as you see it through the lens of uh, JP Morgan uh, culture as well as the industry. And particularly, we'll start with you. Well, I think it's extremely important because I think diversity of views, diversity of people um, can only help grow our business um, and bring in uh, new ideas. Um, I think it's extremely important and it, it's great to look up and, and see people who look like yourself. And, and um, that's a beautiful thing about my office, actually. I say it's United Nations in my office because we have someone from Tehran, Taiwan, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Mexico. We have me. I was going to see where you're going to go with the alliteration. I was trying to think of what other <laughs> city would be T. The Gucci Galpa. I was, I was waiting for it, but go ahead. <laughs> So diversity matters because if we get someone in from Taiwan, I have someone there that makes them very comfortable and it can build trust. So I think diversity, um, it's the key really to advancing our business. It really is. It's really important. Crystal, any thoughts there? I totally agree. I think we are changing the face of what financial advice looks like and what a financial advisor looks like. Because, you know, stereotypically, there's when you think of a financial advisor, there's one image, right? There's a, at least in, in my uh, experience, right? There's a middle aged white man. And so when I came to the firm and I see myself, I met Tequila, I have, you know, a diverse team, you know, here in Atlanta that I work with. And so I think it's important because you want, you know, your advisor to reflect what's important to you in your world, right? So the population of investors should be represented in the population of advisors, in my opinion. And that's great. So I'll, I'll recap just some of the thoughts. So uh, as a financial advisor, you're able to develop these deep relationships uh, with clients, uh, and through your advice, you help them make the most of their money and, and enjoying some of these uh, life milestones. Uh, Crystal, you talked about the importance of flexibility even, you know, mm -hmm. as you navigate something that's as unforeseen as, as COVID-19, that, that the firm can and your clients enable you to still manage that balance and, and deliver. Uh, and just more broadly, the importance of the support around whether it's uh, entering the profession, getting your licenses and you know, having the time to prepare uh, and ultimately uh, pass those exams. So those are good, at least the recaps that, that I had uh, for our audience today. But I want to get to one last question, uh, just more broadly speaking. You know, what is your important piece of advice that you were offered to recent grads or young professionals in this job market? I will start with Tequila. Well, Gosh, um, there's 10 great things I could name about working for our firm. The best advice I, I can give is it kind of takes a leap of faith to do this job. It really does. But I always believe that the firm is here to catch you. They really are. With every twist and turn that comes with this position, I've always had a colleague, a manager, someone that I can call to help navigate me through any challenges that I might have, whether it's you know the testing piece, understanding the dynamics of markets. <laughs> Knowledge abounds here. So we're here to to catch our new people and, and make sure that they are successful in their new role. Crystal, any last thoughts? I would echo that, right? And just try not to be intimidated by, um, you know, this role and this task. Um, I would say follow your passion. So do what you are passionate about. Um, and I would say, you know, when opportunity knocks, open the door. Got it. Well, thank you both for such an insightful discussion on building a career as a financial advisor. And I know our audience viewers didn't just tune in to see me or the guests. They tuned in to get some insight, which they got, but they also tuned in to understand where they could apply for these jobs. So can you talk about like right now, if I've now heard this great insight and I want to pursue a career as a financial advisor, 
what steps should I take? Where can I go to learn more about these roles? Well, for more information, they can visit our website at jpmorganchase.com slash ADP to get more information on our advisor development program. And that one again is ADP, not to be confused with ABP, but yes. Uh, thank you. And anything else you would like to add there? Yes, you can also visit the ABP careers website where you can find financial advisor roles. You can filter by location, the location where you are or any location where you would like to be. Thanks, Tequila and Crystal. Uh, one, again, I'm going to give you that URL that you can visit, and it is www.jpmorganchase.com forward slash ABP careers. And you can catch the replay of this episode as well as our previous episodes where we talked about careers in banking and how to navigate your career during these transformative times, as well as financial health practices as a newly minted professional. So go back and see any of the episodes. And I just want to take the opportunity uh, to thank you all for tuning in for today and for this entire session. And we invite you to look into careers at J.P. Morgan Chase, where your talent is not only wanted, but needed during these transformative times. So thank you again for tuning in. Thank you.